a way to set up why this is something that I wanted to get into, if I possibly could, in the second half, would be to watch a clip uh, that I've been thinking about lately. I'd, I'd actually almost forgotten about it, although I remember seeing it originally. So this is from the Michael Brooks show. And this actually, even though they're talking about philosophy, this wasn't like a segment that I was on. It's it's just Michael and and uh, uh, great David Griscom and, uh, and, and Matt Leck, uh, I think the other day. Uh, somebody on Twitter called Jake. Um, what was it? The uh, um, bizarre, Bizarro Matt Leck. And I think Jay Andy was a uh, Bizarro Griscom. So uh, we are our own people, but uh, I appreciate it. You know, they're cool. Yeah. I missed that tweet. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so uh, so this is just Michael and David and Matt. But I remember, I remember this made me laugh when I first watched it. I think um, I remember... I think I might have been back in Michigan at that point, but I remember I was like walking the dog and you know listening to a little TMBS uh, as I as I did you know episodes I was on back then. So uh, let's let's just have that clip right now. Hey, this one really caught my attention. This yeah. is hysterical, and we haven't spent that much time talking about Charlie Kirk at all. Charlie Kirk is, of course, uh, who is who funds uh, Turning Points USA? Was that Foster uh, Freeze? Foster Freeze, yeah. Okay, so Foster Freeze is an infamous reactionary oligarch he did the infamous uh put an aspirin between your knees as birth control comment i think back in 2011 yeah. uh funder of rick santorum and other you know extreme far-right figures uh and you know charlie somehow got to him and was just like man you know i'm at college and i had to hear who this guy caesar chavez was i mean it's just a disaster and uh this is just funny. Like, I don't, I have to say, especially in my mood of, you know, there's just a million legitimate criticisms of campus politics, frankly, like millions. And I feel like we end up having to delineate them on like the actual left because they undermine the actual left. And like, not only does Charlie Kirk, of course, not go there because at the end of the day, he's a, you know, reactionary dope who wants yeah. to his, you know, mythologize and naturalize, you know, basically in my view, every form of, of repression and uh, exploitation imaginable. But it's like, what happened? You're gonna watch this clip and I'm gonna miss like, what happened to Rush Limbaugh just being a fat fuck who was just an <laughs> asshole? Like what happened to like, I don't need to read all that stuff. I Ronald Reagan, Reader's Digest, and the Steelers. Like, just stop doing this shit. Stop pretending that you've read this stuff. Mm -hmm. Or do it if you're going to pretend like this, because it's pretty fun. To have the opposition party go full Rousseauian Marxist. I'm so glad you mentioned Rousseau, because that he was the gateway to Karl <laughs> Marx. And Plato was really the gateway to Rousseau. And what the big conversation is... You're well read, the Republic and so forth. Good. Thank you. And Aristotle and Plato, oh, who of you. course was the the age old student and teacher dynamic. Of course, Socrates taught age Plato. Old. Plato taught Aristotle. But Aristotle disagreed with Plato on one fundamental thing. He disagreed on a lot, which is: is private property a good thing or a bad thing? Plato said, "Bad thing. Get rid of private. Get rid of private property." Plato also argued against the nuclear family. Aristotle said, "No, I actually." I think private property serves a role. I think that if you try to take people's stuff away, all of a sudden you're going to take away their meaning and their ability to pass on wealth and ideas to the next generation. Oh, this Lord. divide between Aristotle and Plato is playing out today in our politics. Let me tell you something. To if Aristotle was that easy to read, I would have done way better in Greek philosophy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I took uh, political science uh, when my when my youngest was born, and, and I remember reading um, Socrates, and it's pronounced Socrates as we all know, and and um, like Plato was not even that, uh, that like 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 <laughs> like he doesn't understand Plato. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's. Uh... <laughs> It, it's not, I mean, I will also say, I mean, on the Plato issue, so he's, you know, this is part of what's stuck in my head from that clip that, you know, he specifically is talking about Plato. He's, he's attributed this view to him that uh, he does not have, needless to say, 
Um, you know, Plato is not a communist. Um, you know, he he has, uh, you know, maybe there's a certain sense in which everything would be controlled by, you know, the philosopher kings and the warriors shouldn't have stuff because they should just be, you know, worried about defending the city or whatever. But it's it's certainly the opposite of any sort of pretense to egalitarianism. Yeah. Plato to Rousseau? Uh, <laughs> and then Rousseau, and then like the connection he's drawing there, right? Plato... Therefore, you know, Plato, Plato gets you, uh, Rousseau gets you, Karl Marx, uh, is, is just weird. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>